to us, they are people. To you, she is a mouth to feed, a form to fill, a file to read. The one sitting still in a filled bed or a chair on wheels, you would never believe that she longs to wear heels. She's your statistic, your percentage, your number, your target, your aim, your nine o'clock. You are just objective. To you, she is just an object. To us, she is the daughter of who we dreamed, the baby girl who screamed, the much-loved sister whose only fault is that she can't play had or twister, the treasured friend whose love will never end, the much-loved wife who promised love for life, the favourite aunt who gave the favourite potted plant, the mother like no other who loved one son and then his brother. She is a member of our family, a part of our lives. We know her feelings, her hopes and her dreams. We know her favourite colour, song and football teams. To us, she is a person. I'm so sorry I can't be with you today. I stand in solidarity with every single sick person, disabled person, their families, friends and carers whose lives are being destroyed by this government's attack on our basic human rights. It is incomprehensible that over 10,000 sick and disabled people have died since being forced to submit to a work capability assessment delivered by ATOS, who quite frankly don't give a toss. This is the seventh richest country in the world. And we have the resources to make sure everybody, regardless of health or mobility or personal wealth, is provided for. There is no excuse for what is happening today. This is not about money saving. This is about an ideological attack on some of the most vulnerable people in society. We have got to stop it happening before more people lose their lives. The government, aided by corporate-led media, has created a climate where people needing benefits are demonised as scourges. This cannot be further from the truth. Every disabled person I've met wants to work, to be an active member of society. But in order to do so, Many of us require additional support. By cutting this vital support framework, the government is actually making disabled people more dependent and less able to engage in employment. That is a tragic irony. These cuts push more disabled people into poverty and as they lose the ability to control their lives, into institutional care. There are also disabled and sick people who can't work, no matter how much they want to. Anyone can become sick and disabled. I did. You can. We must ensure that these people are treated with respect and dignity that we would wish for those that we love. Instead of portraying us as burdens on the state, we should be proud to provide the care and support needed. This is what a civilised society does. We are constantly told that these cuts have to be made. That there is no money to fund the welfare state. This is not true. We bailed out the banks to a tune of nearly a trillion pounds. We allow bankers to pocket 14 billion in bonuses every year. We spent 20 billion on recent wars. The rich have been getting richer through this recession, but the government.
refuse to cap bonuses and stop funding war or the Trident Missile Programme. It refuses to tax tax avoiders and evaders who cost our economy £120 billion annually. Those responsible for the economic, economic crash continue to be rewarded while our own hard-earned rights are being systematically eroded. Those in power over there need to be reminded that they serve us. Yeah. We have to make sure no more people die because of these cuts and that we never forget. Let us honour their memory by fighting for, who, for a humane society that places human health and happiness above the profit motive. We need to join together in numbers and demand better, especially for those who are voiceless. Join with us and demand a better, fairer way. the mother of parliaments, the place where our lawmakers work. For those who govern us and make our laws, that through the clamour of many voices, they may hear and respond to the quiet suffering of many in our society. For a new deal for disabled people, and an end to assessments which demean and distress them for those who prefer dogma or ambition to compassion. For resolution in Parliament that everyone, able-bodied or impaired, must be able to play a full part in our society. For all of us, in this country, not to rest content until lawmakers act to put right what is wrong for disabled people, 